Hey guys, welcome to my first video. Had a lot of requests for this. Be easy on me, I've never done this before. We're gonna start out by making our epoxy, mixing the two parts in. Uh, I'm using a super clear 2.0 uh, liquid glass by FCGI. It's a pretty low viscosity uh, resin, so even without the vacuum chamber, bubbles are minimal, if any. This will take probably about three days to fully cure before I'm comfortable enough with cutting it and planing it. Over here you can see this is the mold I built, form rather. I made this out of melamine. You can get melamine pretty cheap from the big box stores. Just cut it up, I lined it with tuck tape, and you can see I siliconed the uh, corners of it all the way through. Added an extra bead of uh, hot glue on the outside, just as an extra barrier to help protect it. But this is where we will pour the resin and let it cure to give us our planks. Here's where I'll hit it a few times with the torch um, and that will just get rid of some of the air bubbles on top. A uh, little low on uh, butane here. So, um, but for something this small, I'll just use a little handheld butane, give it a few clicks. Don't wanna give it too much heat because you don't want it to, uh, to flash cure or uh, cure unevenly. After I initially hit it with the torch, then I will use a um, uh, alcohol spray rather uh, going forward and that will have the same effect. It'll break the surface tension, break any air bubbles at the top of it. Any 91% um, isopropyl alcohol spray will do just fine. This one I think I got at Walgreens or something. Now we'll wait for the resin to cure. Like I said before, that'll take about three days. So we'll come back, check on it then, break it from the mold and start uh, milling it along with our lumber. All right, so uh, I went ahead and pulled these out of the mold that we made. Uh, it's three days later for this one, uh, but I decided to make a couple others in the meantime, just in case. Um, and this is what we wind up with, a lime green one, a yellow one, blue one. Uh, I'm still pondering a design for uh, the next uh, vessel to make. Um, so haven't quite decided yet, might not use the other two, uh, might just stick with the blue. Uh, for the time being But you can see these planks here. They're casted almost about an inch thick uh, Actually a little bit more than an inch and what we'll do When we're all done with these is I'm going to plane these with the planer uh, We'll trim up the edges. I'm not worried about the ends being on here because I'm just going to cut those off We'll trim up the edges. We'll run it through a planer. I'm going to run it through a planer with this board here this is maple all right you can see that it needs to be milled it's unfinished and that way we will clean these and cut these uh, to equal thicknesses um, and equal strips we'll end up with something similar to this this is from the last one and this is what we'll cut our segments from.
All right, so as you can see, we got our strips cut. Everything's planed, everything is perfectly uh, equal in terms of thickness, in terms of width. And this will be what we cut our segments with. With both the maple and the cast resin. Uh, don't worry about uh, irregularities or little divots or whatnot in the resin. Uh, those will, the rings will be sanded later and uh, the glue up will be of resin. So it should fill most of those uh, cracks, if there are any. So that's it, and uh, from here on out, we basically are going to treat this, uh, these resin pieces just like we would if they were wood in making a segmented vessel. All right, so this is where we begin uh, cutting the segments. So based on... Uh, however many segments you're going to use, uh, that will determine the uh, degree at which they need to be cut. So in this case, uh, I'm going to be doing uh, 20 segments per ring. Um, there are calculators online that you can use to determine what the degree is. Um, they'll also help you determine uh, the length based on the circumference that you want. So I have a precision miter. Um, you want to use a precision miter because the miter that comes with your saw is going to have a lot of wiggle room in the track here. And just the tiniest little bit is going to throw off uh, your segment angle. And though it might not seem like much, even if it's a 64, uh, it compounds for the segments going around in a circle and they'll never line up correctly. You'll have all kinds of problems. Um, it also has these pieces in here that expand and make it nice and snug in the track. So when you put it in, there is no movement back and forth. It can't shift at all in there. Uh, that's important to have a, a, an accurate angle on each and every segment. I have this piece of wood here uh, just so that uh, when I have my fence set based on the length of each segment, um, I can just butt this against it instead of having to, you know, fight the fence the entire way uh, with the wood against it uh, to where I cut the segment. So I'll butt it up against that, and now I'm not hugging the fence anymore. It'll go and cut. So I'm going to do the first cut on here uh, just to get the first angle started because right now that's just a 90-degree a angle. So that's basically the uh, angle that you're going to have for each segment. It'll be that on each side. What you'll do to uh, make sure that each one is cut perfectly is once I have this angle cut, I'm going to flip the board and take this corner here, butt it up against the edge of my wood piece, and then I will uh, cut the first segment. For each segment that you do, you're going to uh, cut that. Uh, flip and cut, flip and cut, flip and cut. And so what you'll wind up with are your segments like this. And that's how they'll stack in the ring, which we'll do later. All right, so what I'm gonna do next is uh, 
something that, uh, an idea that I had for uh, an issue that I had with the last vessel I did on the glue-ups. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, the segments, at least the resin segments and the wood segments that connect to the resin segments, and I'm going to sand them down nice and smooth. This is 120 grit because I found some uh, what seemed to be air pockets and the glue up. I used a resin to glue it up uh, and they were visible since the resin is translucent. So I'm going to attempt to tackle that and this is how we're going to sand them. And then when I'm done sanding them on the wood pieces, I'm going to put a seal coat with a paintbrush, just a thin layer of resin on the wood pieces that the resin connects to. I don't care about the wood pieces that connect to other wood pieces because you're never going to see that. Uh, so we're going to go with a seal coat this time and I'm going to uh, get these sanded down first and we'll have to wait for the seal coat to dry. All right, uh, so I've gone ahead and uh, seal coated the segments, the wood segments that will be touching the resin portion uh, so that they don't create any air bubbles. The segments that will be touching wood don't need that. All I did was just paint a thin layer on these, let it cure um, the same way I would as, I, as if I was going to do a glue up. Um, what I'll typically do from here is just take and just lightly sand it because you don't want to sand the seal coat off, All right? Just kind of get a little bit of a dullness to it. So that the uh, resin that you're going to use for glue up will adhere to it. And then, uh, as I mentioned before, we're just using uh, this uh, chill fix because it has a very fast curing time. It just cuts down on the time. It doesn't have to be this. You can use uh, your regular epoxy or even your casting epoxy uh, to do this. Uh, it's just gonna take longer to cure. Uh, this just breaks down uh, cuts down on my downtime a bit. And this here is a two to one ratio. And this particular resin is measured by weight. Not all resin is me measured by weight, some is by volume. You have to look and see what particular resin you're using uh, requires you to measure it off by. pieces, separate out the ones that you seal coated so that you know which ones are going to border the resin segments. Alright, and you're going to paint resin onto both sides of it, just like if it were glue. For every subsequent segment, you're going to paint both sides of it. You want contact from both sides of each segment. I like to slide them a little bit just to help get any bit of uh, trapped air in there, create a little bit of suction in between the segments.
you have them all in place. We're going to take our hose clamp. Again, if you don't have one large enough, you can pull it apart and link multiples together. And I'm going to little by little tighten it uh, just so that we don't get shifted out of, uh, out of proportion. Pay attention to your segments like this one here. And you just simply push back toward the outside of the ring. You want to try to make sure they're as flat as possible. Even though you're going to sand it later, it just creates a lot less work if they're all flush. All right. Flip it around, tighten it a little bit more. Make sure that the segments are still good. If you need to, you can knock it down with a mallet. The segment's a little bit out of place. This one's a little out of place. So just take it, squeeze it back, push it back this way to the outside of the ring. It looks like we're pretty. This segment here needs to be pushed a little bit. Let's do a quick scan around it. Uh, this one is pretty good. And then from there, you can go ahead and crank down on hose clamp. That's it. From this point, you'll let the resin cure. In this case, it's usually about three to four hours, depending on ambient temperatures and a number of other factors. But uh, And I try to just give a quick wipe off of the excess. Again, it doesn't matter too much because we're going to sand it uh, once it's cured and before we stack the ring onto the next, the next piece. And there you have your ring. You're going to repeat this process for every ring that you do that you're going to stack for whatever vessel that you're making. And it's just rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. All right. Uh, for sanding these down, I'm, I'm going to try a little bit of a new method than I normally do uh, that was recommended by uh, some wood turners in a, on a page that I'm on. And I'm going to put this ring on here and attempt to get a more even surface than I would with my orbital sander. A drum sander is ideal, but I don't have a drum sander. So I'm going to try to uh, level this out, knock it down mostly with my skew chisel, and then sand it uh, with a long piece of sandpaper that I applied to a piece of wood. Uh, and see if that gives me a more even uh, ring surface to glue to when I go to stack them. see pretty smooth all the way around can't feel the seams this is the surface that we're looking for right here you can often take a, a, a flat object maybe like a level something that you know is true flat run it across just to make sure that uh, it doesn't you know slope inward or outward so that you have a nice flat gluing surface with maximum contact and uh, more importantly no gaps 
Okay, so what I've done now is I've taken the ring, the one that you saw me sand earlier, I attached it to my base here. Uh, normally I would trim off the edges, but I'll deal with that on the lathe. Um, it's a little easier if you trim them off ahead of time. Um, this was glued to this piece using the uh, fast setting resin that I have, and then did the same thing with this one. I had these jaws on this end, sanded it, smoothed it over, and what we're gonna do is we'll paint the resin onto the surface of this one and this one. And the way that I join the rings, and it doesn't have to be done this way, but for me it's, it's easier, uh, is I will slide this up against that piece and you'll want to line it up to however your segments go. Um, kind of tough to do with one hand, but I'll mount the camera in a second and show you, and then tighten down. But that's how you build your rings, and then what I'll probably do is turn these two first, uh, along with the base, before adding another ring. That helps you get into the inside and round out the bottom nicely. Uh, much easier than having uh, built it all the way out to here and dealing with it. So that's how we'll glue those up. All right. So I'm mixing up another small batch of the fast setting resin. It's a good idea to just clean the surfaces of these with uh, an alcohol spray, that's fine. Uh, two reasons, one, it dries quickly and two, it does not interact adversely with the epoxy. And again with this you want to be pretty generous with spreading it around the, the uh, ring just as you would if you were using wood glue. And then crank this down, just gonna snug it up onto the ring, tighten that, and that's how you'll let it sit until it cures and then you'll have your next ring stack. All right, so uh, now's the time where we start turning it. Uh, uh, the traditional roughing gouge works pretty good uh, to rough it up with, but when you start getting into the finer things, you want something like a, a scraper, using a number of scrapers because they're a lot more gentle on the resin. Otherwise, the resin will chip. Uh, even the, the roughing gouge will make it chip a little bit. Uh, but for finishing, I will almost always finish with a, a traditional type uh, scraper. Uh, so we'll go ahead and start turning a bit.
So here it is. I didn't uh, video the finished part because it was a bit of trial and error. And uh, I tried a number of things because I wanted to go for a gloss finish. Uh, first one was friction polish. Uh, it came out terrible. Uh, either I'm not good at it or it's just not good for a large uh, vessel like this. Um, but that's the finish that I got on it. It was... Um, uh, what I ended up doing was uh, on a recommendation from one of the instructors at uh, Rockler uh, was to spray it with a uh, Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel and uh, then I polished it down, uh, wet sanded it, polished it back down again and then I ended up actually putting a coat of um, wax on it. But there it is.